So he dropped me off at the uh, intersection for Dangia Village or Dangia Kun and the 1.5 kilometer walk. I want to make the walk. This is the intersection in case I need to remember it. That three wheeler filled with bricks. Notice how it can hardly move with that weight that it has. The ground here is fairly black and I think it's because there's a lot of coal here. It may even be a coal mining area. I don't know. Dijiakun first made its mark uh, transporting, I think, timber across the Yellow River, which must be down here somewhere. Um, and then that was in the 14th century. And since then, it has become principally a agricultural little town. Here you can see a combination of small motorized equipment and a tremendous amount of hand labor. Here's just a pretty bit of tile work I noticed. Anything that's pretty stands out in cities that are so old and so covered with grime. The water, water drainage system, uh, pretty big and deep and rounded at the bottom, which they're normally not. This one's sculptured out of cement. Looks like it initially had an original cover that stone, if there really was stone here all the way down, has probably been taken for other uses. We can see some remnant of stone that still exists. Probably because these pieces aren't have any use, normal use. I've often wondered why we have orchards like our pecan orchards and uh, pistachio orchards in um, sun sites, but we don't use the ground underneath it for anything. Here, of course, they're planting underneath I, what these are, I'm not sure. Here, there obviously someone's or some agency has taken the responsibility to clean up and remove the uh, weeds and so forth from along this stretch here to restore the beauty that was initially intended for these trees. Again, wherever I go, it always seems sometimes in the worst of circumstances, somebody or some group of people will make some attempt that is obvious on their part, some attempt on their part that becomes obvious, to make their surroundings prettier. Sometimes, sometimes it'll be just a simple little plant, potted plant on a windowsill, for example. Here they're harvesting the uh, corn crop, and this lady here hauling that uh, wheelbarrow type wagon. Good examples here are these rose bushes right alongside the road. Substitute perhaps for the trees in this instance. Probably some kind of business. Here as friendly as ever. Uh, I say uh, ni hao which means hello and they respond. And uh, then they keep talking and I have to go uh, no I don't speak Chinese and I, the way I do that is um, I just put my arms up and I'm put my little my finger and my thumb close together to indicate that it's just a little and I rattle off a few more of the words that I know and they start chuckling and I chuckle and we all have a good laugh of that and I move on. This is the magpie of China. This business, uh, some more of these flowers plus those look like squash plants but uh, again it adds abuse. This area had obviously been quaffed before and the area we just walked by has just been done but it's interesting that they're doing this when the people who live here are also in the midst of harvesting their corn which is for them I'm sure a major enterprise. I try to remove my glasses before I approach somebody I know I'm going to be saying hello to because sunglasses are a real deal killer and probably have been for the last million years or so. This is either Saturday or Sunday uh, around noon, a little bit after noon now and everybody seems to be going home carrying their work implements, shovels, rakes, that sort of thing. Here again I've seen the use of this modern equipment uh, to prepare the soil. I'm having a chuckle at my doing this, but I think uh, for them, I don't know what they think of it, but to me that represents a strong change from having to do it all by hand. Now the people will come in and probably dress this up by hand, I don't know. Once the tractor has 
um, tilled the soil, they'll come in by hand, I think, and fashion it into these rows like this. And I think they plant something on the top of the row. You can see it there and you can see some little plants coming up right there. But then I think they may also plant in between a different crop. Here on the side of this uh, field they piled all of the uh, stalks. I got a feeling they have a use for those yet. Which is why they don't let them get ground underneath. This looks like it's part of an irrigation system. Remember this is not a temple, it's a gate. Probably the gate for uh, Deng Jiakun, um, or, to, or to memorialize something other than that. Okay, here in the little furrows that maybe the plow left, but I don't think so. I think those were done by the people. If I could be wrong, something actually something dragged through there and did that. So maybe there's another tool the tractor uses. Uh, there they planted seeds. Maybe they have an automatic uh, seed planter too. So this does stand for. Uh, down Jiakun. In fact, notice the, uh, what looks like a hook on the lower right uh, side of the first symbol. And then look at the double cross, if you will, on the last symbol. Okay, and here you have the same thing. I'm guessing that'd be too much of a coincidence, but if I checked all the rest of the details, I'm sure it checks out. I'm guessing on this side there's some kind of a statement that is the statement identified with uh, Dang Jiakun whatever that might be. They're a pretty some how pretty is that? Let's look closer. Maybe the magpie? Don't think so. How beautifully maintained this is. Is that comport with Dave's idea that people either have uh, a respect for themselves reflected in the way they care for the things they have, including their property, or is it something they do for some other reason? I suspect somewhere down ahead of me I'll turn right and go into the little town. Probably goes without saying I haven't seen a Caucasian since I left the two folks from Prague this morning at the uh, bus station. Out here I'm about a hundred kilometers from Xi'an. I'm not sure what the state grid is but I see their offices all over any part of China that I've been in. Maybe either a utility or a farm cooperative. I you have to wonder what this huge what looks like a parking lot was for particularly with these dividers. That makes sense though but over there they found a use for a couple of basketball uh, hoops and uh, uh, some uh, either kids uh, equipment or exercise equipment or both and there they're drying corn so I'll wander around this curve up here ahead of me rather than take this right um, and thought there's a sign that's the sign has a name Tanjia Kuna so I'll go right on the assumption that they put it there for a reason. This may be the entrance down here because I do recall Lonely Planet saying there was an entrance fee. So this is a large map. They don't have a small version of it. Um, I'll put this on this tape and then put it on a new tape. It doesn't tell me where I am but maybe I'll be able to figure it out later. 